What's up, guys? If you're ready, let's hop right into what happened in technology this week. Google made a ton of AI announcements this week, starting with transforming Google Bard into your very own AI personal assistant. They want to help you stay on top of all your tasks right from your phone. Uh, now, this AI assistant, I'm going to call him Brad, Bard, Brad. Uh, he's going to help you with various tasks, like help you dig up important emails in your inbox. Everybody needs that. Uh, he can help you organize your next trip and even send a text or write a post on your behalf like a true assistant would. Uh, you can interact with Brad, your personal assistant, via text, voice, or images, and it will be available on Android and iOS mobile devices in the coming months. Now, I do have to tell you, since the announcement, Google employees have been slamming Bard. Some are questioning the usefulness of large language models, and others are saying you can't trust LLM outputs. But Google is saying, hey, we hear you. These are valid concerns and a natural part of product development, which is going to help us make improvements. Here's another exciting Google announcement. This is my favorite, by the way. You can now test out the generative search experience. Have you seen it? Check this out. I'm going to show you how to generate AI images directly inside the Google search. The first thing you have to do is you have to click on the lab icon on the top right corner of your screen uh, and turn on the generative experience you want to try. I'm going to try image generator, so let's turn it on. Then go in the search box and I'm going to type, draw me a car. And it's going to say generating, generating, generating. Come on now, generating and voila. Check this out. You have a variety of car images here and you can also do follow-ups and keep building on your search. Uh, by the way, these generative experiences are also available on your phone. Just remember, you have to turn the feature on. Google really wants you to use their generative AI. And now they're saying, if you do and you end up in some court situation, guess what? They're going to have your back. On Thursday, Google said it will defend users of generative AI in its Google Cloud and Workspace platforms if they're accused of intellectual property violations. They really do want you to uh, use their platform, don't they? Uh, but I do have to let you know that other companies like Adobe and Microsoft have also made similar pledges. So did you notice this week Apple briefly removed the MetaMask wallet from its Apple store and it caused a huge ruckus? Uh, now, they did come out and make a statement saying this was not due to security issues. Uh, they didn't give a, a reason why the app was removed from the App Store, but experts are saying it's most likely because of Apple's policy against unrelated background processes like crypto mining. Now, MetaMask is connected to various Web3 decentralized apps, and they're saying they have 30 million users that are using the app worldwide. Uh, now, the app has been restored since, but this is not the first time MetaMask is facing challenges with big tech companies. Google Play, I don't know if you recall, they suspended MetaMask back in 2019 over crypto-related issues. Well, with everything that's going on in the world, here's a happy crypto headline for you. Ferrari is now accepting crypto payments in the U.S. and soon in Europe. They're saying, hey, customers are demanding it and we're going to give it to them. Now, they're starting with Bitcoin, Ethereum and USD coin first with zero additional fees. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and BitPay is the company that's going to handle all the conversions to fiat as well as crypto verifications. Now, if you recall, Tesla was first uh, to experiment with Bitcoin payments back in 2021, but it was halted by Elon because of environmental concerns. Uh, by the way, if you're going to go spend all your Bitcoin on Ferrari, I need to tell you they're fully committed until 2025. If you can't get the Ferrari, I do have a more budget-friendly option for you. You can consider buying a Honda with your crypto, <laughs> but you can only do it through a third-party platform. Apparently, 
there was some misinformation claiming Honda is accepting crypto, uh, but the company came out and had to make a statement, set the record straight and say, no, 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 we don't accept crypto. However, you can use a third party solution like FCF Pay to pay for your Honda. And if Honda is not your taste, uh, FCF does offer other brands like Mercedes, BMW, Ford, and even Nissan that you can purchase with your crypto. Uh, FCF payment is currently available in the US and soon in Mexico and Latin America. All right, guys, that's all the headlines I have for you today. I would love to hear from you. So take a moment and leave your thoughts right below in the comments. And I'll see you again next week with more news in technology. Thank you.